Hello all, welcome back to this course on Precision Oncology. Today we will be talking about Cancer Detection Method Part 2. Uh, in the last class we have really got introduced to what exactly is cancer screening, why would we really definitely, what is the point, what is basically cancer screening. If you recollect we will say that we are just stratifying populations into positive and negative. We have taken example of cervical cancer screening and we have discussed about what uh, we have just got uh, inter uh, introduced to the small concepts of what exactly is that lead bias, all the term uh, small terminologies uh, pertaining to cancer screening and then we further slowly went on to introduce about two small uh, the word called the biomarkers there we did not go into details then we know what exactly is a positive predictive value what is a false positive what is a negative predictive value and uh, so on and forth. So, today we will be in depth going into the concepts of a particular detection methods, what exactly they are and what uh, so uh, this uh, in this particular module, uh, module we will try our best to cover all the existing detection methods for cancer screening and uh, we will discuss about the case studies for some for certain cancer types like your uh, breast cancer, your cervical cancer and the colorectal cancer and importantly the lung cancer. Why exactly do we need cancer uh, detection or screening? It is not exactly you say yes, no cancer is not over. In fact, you know as I always been mentioning in this particular series like it is a precision, uh, it is more tailored. It is not like the cancer treatment regimen is tailored to fit that particular tumor type, this tumor type pertaining with the genotype. What exactly is the mutation? If a mutation is positive, the, dr the druggable uh, genome is, the druggable whatever is called, the target drug is different. That way for different cancers, for your lung, there is a TKI inhibitors. If it is an EGFR positive, the regimen is different for a EGFR wild type. Similarly with other cancer for even your breast and others. Now coming back, this importance of cancer answer it is not like you know uh, it is by started with Hippocrates. It is for, what he first said is that it is far more important to know that a sort of a person the disease has than what sort of the disease the person has. So basically the patients are stratified based on the particular cancer subtype based on the genotype or what exactly the mutation the cancer is having. The cancer screening was an element of the periodic physical examination before in the 1920s. It, it may usually consist of palpitation to find a mass or maybe sometimes enlarged lymph nodes and then or maybe an abnormal uh, sound. But today what is happening? Screening has grown to include your, your have first definitely those age old methods are the visible methods, but definitely you have your radiological testing, then you have your measurement of your serum markers and definitely a must is your molecular testing. If it is any of these is a positive test, it requires further diagnostic tests which may lead to further down, you narrow down on the cancer screening time precision medicine, this is all your textbook material, has a long list of predecessor terms which uh, similar meanings which also includes your personalized medicine, predictive, preventive, participatory and medicine which also includes your genomics medicine, predictive medicine and individualized medicine. As I mentioned before, you know the cancer goal of this cancer screening is to prevent uh, uh, death and suffering from the uh, from the disease that whatever the disease that you have an early therapeutic intervention the therapy will be started early to give a give a better treatment outcome so uh, cancer screening usually refers to performing a test or examination on an asymptomatic individual who may seem healthy but they could be harboring the disease in a very much in an initial stages what are this uh, med, uh, criteria to be met for uh, your screening to be efficient? The disease burden is significant. For example, yes, there is a high disease. For example, your breast cancer or your lung cancer, the disease burden is very, very high. So, so the natural history of the disease is such that a detectable uh, Pre, okay, pre-clinical stage exists. For example, your cervical cancer. This progression is such that yes, if you can screen it in your pre-clinical stages, yes, it is very much, very much 
treatable yes the the, the uh, disease outcome is where the patient survival outcome is very very good definitely the course of the disease is such that your pre detectical preclinical phase is very very favorable if you detect it early yes the chance of survival are very high the test or procedure must detect cancers earlier as i mentioned before if the cancers are detected uh, much before the development of your symptoms and and your your treatment should be initiated earlier as a consequences as a result it will have a better clinical outcome now coming back to our favorable terms a cancer what is a biomarker this is something which has been uh, very well uh, very well export this term you know it's not necessary pertaining to biomarker even but you have a biomarker for your heart disease biomarkers for uh, your uh, diabetes you have several biomarkers so name it for everything there is a it's such a favorable term i mean it's a fantastic term in biology it is a characteristic that is measured as an indicator or with pertaining to cancer as a risk of cancer or occurrence of cancer anything which this particular marker is uh, associated uh, with the indicator for this all this three particular uh, instances for example risk occurrence and patient outcome these characteristics can be either your biomarker can be either a molecular it could be a cellular or it could be even your physiological for example the size of the tumor could be can be not included as a biomarker yes now these by bio, this particular uh, biomarkers are found in tissues or body fluids and are produced by cancer cells or normal cells in response to cancer this is all your typical uh, biomarker uh, definitions from your national cancer institute it says that a biomarker is found that is found in blood or other body fluids or uh, tissue that is in signs of a normal or an abnormal process, process. for example your uh, hpv 16 in the in your cervical strips yes it is uh, if it is found even in both no, i mean it's not necessary it should be found but you look for the presence of your hpv virus in your cervical strips that is called a biomarker it may be used how well the body responds to the treatment for example your uh, different uh, biomarkers in the serum for a disease or a condition the then a bio, so several dictionaries have this particular definition now what is this role in a diagnostic the role of a bio, bio, biomarker is to help diagnose cancer perhaps before it is detectable by convention methods as i mentioned before in prognosis to forecast how aggressive the disease process and or how a patient can expect to fare in the absence of a therapy can we do can uh, we have particular predictive to help identify which patients will respond to which drugs these are all you know the very very uh, the whole uh, concept of biomarkers especially to pertaining to cancer is slowly evolving into all these three this particular descriptions and they all have this particular uh, difference for example you have an mirna panel then you have you stratify some a group of mirna then can you uh, for uh, can you put them into one of this particular categories yes very well done this is the typical uh, cancer institute which defines so something a uh, uh, biomarker versus your clinical are they clinical endpoints to define that the national cancer institute it defines a tumor marker where it says a substance that may be found in tumor or tissue or which is released from the tumor into the blood so you assay for this particular biomarker either in the blood or directly from the tissue or into any other body fluid for example your uh, uh, urine samples it's uh, however this definition is is a very proper which is by, by given by the national cancer institute now what are the different uh, uses of your biomarkers first thing to check as i said mentioned to uh response to treatment then your screening very very important like i mentioned your um uh, hpv hpv virus so can we do that then differential diagnosis can it may be used for yes monitoring and progression of disease yes can you use it for a risk assessment yes they all this. you have different different biomarkers which we can really as we go towards uh, towards the end of this session we will really understand how we can totally categorize the particular biomarkers so you have something what is called circulating tumor markers and tumor tissue markers this for circulating tumor markers are which are released into the blood for example your different dna markers then the tumor tissue markers which are ideally present in the tumor tissue per se
A tumor marker is anything present uh, which is present in or produced by cancer cells or other cells of the body in response to cancer or, or to certain benign non-cancerous conditions. So they have been usually more any of these markers traditionally been proteins or any other substances that have made it higher amounts by cancer cells than normal cells. It can be found in as I mentioned before blood stool or they are found in tissues, body fluids with cancer. For, ex uh, for example, many tumor markers have been characterized and they are in clinical use. Sometimes you only have one tumor marker which is associated with only one cancer, whereas you may have the same tumor marker even present to across different several cancer types. This is the typical uh, uh, algorithm for like uh, what is the use of uh, biomarkers in your cancer medicine, medicine is like for example prior to cancer can this uh, risk assessment as I mentioned before Am, is, is there is a patient at increased risk for cancer diagnosis is this biomarker is it useful if you have a particular uh, uh, protein whatever it is like is it useful for diagnosis yes do I have a cancer what type of cancer do I have for example this is here your classific examples of your uh, breast cancer markers that is your uh, um, HR, PR and DR uh, markers then after diagnosis, cancer diagnosis, prognosis, what is expected course of the cancer? For example, you have a certain set of genes where, you know, definitely the outcome for if the, the, if the patient is positive for this particular set of genes, yes, the outcome will may be very poor. They may not, they may progress very, uh, their prognosis will be poor. Then can you predict uh, uh, response? Then you have a set of genes and then if you are giving them a targeted therapy. Now will this cancer respond to this particular drug? Yes. Can we use this biomarkers over here? Yes. Importantly, again we can use a pharmacokinetics. Uh, should they receive the normal dose or should they use a higher dose? And then monitoring uh, treat treatment uh, response. How is this cancer responding to this particular given treatment? Now again post treatment yes you have several biomarkers where okay can if you give there is a recurrence can will this be suppose this particular patient is, is positive for a certain set, set of genes especially in your leukemia and all this hematological cancers yes there is like if they are positive yes there is a very high chance of relapse or recurrence. Now coming back to your examples so now you have like you know uh, there are several tissue markers uh, uh, tumor markers in this tissues for example you know this uh, there are many uh, uh, like your uh, squamous cell carcinoma antigen for your eso esophageal cancer and the CIA for your uh, colorectal cancer this is uh, you should this is mostly used for detecting your esophageal cancers but it has uh, it has it may have a little pathological significance for the for the gastric cancer the presence of the of this particular uh, markers could be a little bit uh, may not be very specific uh, but they are uh, useful for the preoperative pre prediction of the progression state and pro obstructive uh, follow up post operative follow up as i was mentioning before that is like uh, uh, ca 125 uh, 125a is now here you know it is used for uh, uh, predicting peritoneal dissemination ca then ca 19 afp are useful for uh, predicting liver mets metastasis for liver for the colorectal cancer ca is useful to diagnosing its presence the uh, it may could even even, even uh, predict your uh, 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 pro progression and for performing follow-up. Thus, uh, tumor markers with uh, uh, for high specificity for your hepatocellular carcinoma, it include your AFP and your uh, and protein produced by the vitamin K that is your PI, uh, K, uh, PIB K. Uh, two AFP is a representative of your carcinoembryonic antigen that is your CEA and it is normal in produced in fetal river and uh, fetal river but if it's not produced after birth uh, you have the different particular uh, markers here associated with different cancer for example you know uh, this particular uh, neuroblastoma you have the NSC 
also we really know now that there are several tumor specific markers for example your prostate cancer has your PSA here this is all very much on to the tumor specific uh, markers in the particular tissues something very very important here which we will have to be discussing when you say a cancer uh, screening or cancer monitoring or cancer detection whatever is something called imaging now this is a simple uh, algorithm now before uh, this this is now it's like as i've been mentioned the traditional uh, methods for cancer detection maybe could be imaging or whatever maybe which are not still sophisticated but again when you develop a molecular signature for each patient type now how do you combine uh, uh, the cancer for this uh, this whole algorithm to give the benefit for a better outcome for the disease this like you know this is one of the biomedical imaging this is a very uh, strong pillars for comprehensive cancer care i am not putting images for because uh, it's like all pet ct everyone all of us are now familiar with those uh, instruments and it has many of these images now they have uh, uh, real time monitoring and uh, you know a single till and up to the level of a single cell specificity and then uh, they even without harming the other host tissues you know without uh, they are able to we are really having high and sophisticated biomedical imaging techniques now the time scales for this all these machines go from milliseconds and uh, for uh, for they even go for protein binding and chemical uh, small chemical reactions the scale say size scale also go from molecular to level to cellular to organ and again to the whole to the whole body scan and it's based on uh, the whole this is like uh, 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 usually the imaging is the central role of image, imaging in cancer management is uh, for uh, screening the symptomatic uh, or the asymptomatic uh, people and for better disease man management. So it is like uh, the screening then the day here you may recollect we were talking about diagnostics and staging we, we talked about the different stages of the different uh, cancer then again uh, for the during the treat uh, treatment and monitoring again yes the imaging is um, uh, uh, adapted then for follow-up also yes every uh, suppose a patient is with breast cancer uh, after they have finished their uh, treatment and after they are you know every six months you need to go go back to the hospital to the cancer uh, institutes or to the hospital for a uh, better uh, follow-ups some the one thing is like majority of the imaging it's not sometimes you know not very non-specific markers it's like you know it's like for example your pet cd uh, uh, then the, you for you even have your imaging the mammography the colonography then and then uh, the endoscopy the cath lab the molecular imaging has played a very uh, important role for in the lab for uh, biomarker discovery and it's uh, like you know now it's like uh, uh, through, to, uh, through today's uh, imaging technique technology we are able to uh, show exactly the location of the tumor then uh, imaging systems are co constantly evolving they are evolving and uh, they are uh, allowing the scientists to explore the smaller components of the body very very much in a larger detail at the level of uh, the uh, this is uh, how uh, this is this is how the physicians allowed uh, the techniques allowed the physician to see in the body at the macroscopic level at the level of the tissue you have the x-rays you have the cts for example your uh, low cts uh, low dose ct for the lung which we use the pet for all the follow-ups then the, then the mras then the molecular imaging techniques at the level of the sink include your multi-slide ct the pet again your mra the dot that is your diffuse or, or optical uh, to tomography then uh, fluorescence mediated tomography uh, L lne mris and your multi photon microscopy um, where uh, they uh, they um, at the level of the le cell a cell and in a much greater detail the uh, tumor cells can be explored coming back to a very very important word and a very very important uh, uh, terminology here is your molecular biomarkers what exactly are these molecular 
by a marker. For example, if you really recollect our decision, our uh, uh, basics in uh, cancer biology, you know, everything we are focusing on a single cell. For example, we said that there is a change in a mutation in the single cell level. Yes, that will lead to the cancer. We were really talking about how all the minute changes, you know, so many of other, uh, we were talking about how the hallmarks of cancer, it's not necessarily we said that a single hallmark will play a role for, uh, for uh, will in the outcome of that particular uh, transformation of a cell to a cancerous cell. No, it's like it could be a coordination of the hallmark of events or maybe a single one. Like that, you know, uh, exactly now can you come to a very good terminology, something uh, which should be a favorite term for this whole course should be your molecular biomarkers or uh, molecular cancer biomarkers. They are nothing but the molecular indicators which are uh, measurable for the risk of cancer or for the occurrence of cancer or for the prognosis or whatever we were uh, discussing before. These uh, markers are usually germline, germline or somatic genetic variables variants or they are epigenetic signatures or they are uh, they could even be your transcriptional changes and very very importantly your proteomic changes. So get back to your uh, basics of cancer where we were talking about from DNA to RNA, RNA to protein. In this, all this particular uh, variants or the signatures, they all these changes, we can be uh, have assigning it as the molecular signatures. These uh, bio molecular indicators, they are mostly based on your molecule. You need your complete whole in nucleic acid, like such as your uh, nucleic acids, your DNA and the RNA, and you need your uh, proteins. And sometimes these are usually directly taken from your tissue samples. For example, from the tissue itself, you know, directly you extract the RNA or the DNA or then you can even take, you know, much easily from your blood. It's like your CTDNA or from the saliva or the buccal swabs or the stool urine, you know. Uh, this is all like, you know, absolutely uh, first thing whenever for all this molecular biomarkers and all, you know, ideally it will be very nice if the minimum, uh, the, uh, there is minimal invasion. It is like that is how the where the whole uh, diagnostics in precision, precision oncology is moving towards to we have a less invasive, invasive route for taking out the sample for use of molecular diagnostics. And many excellent is here is your detection technologies. You have wonderful techniques such as your NGS uh, training that is your next gen se uh, sequencing and then uh, you know. Uh, and then methods to study your circulating tumor uh, DNA okay, or RNA or exosomes. These are all you have very good detecting te technologies. Some genetic mutations, they increase the risk for developing cancer. That is like for example, a genetic mutation, it could be like it, if you take it as a biomarker, bio it is said to predispose us to cancer. For example, uh, your BRCA1 and the BRCA2 gene, you know, there is like suppose this, uh, pra, these um, genes are associated with an increased risk of cancer. So, harmful mutations can these genes can increase the chance of developing of, of breast cancer. Uh, people with this uh, mutations can obtain more, more frequent uh, sequence that they may detect uh, uh, cancer in its early stages and which can be easily treated. Please come back to this slide, it's molecular diagnostics in oncology which we just grazed upon it uh, in the last uh, session as an introductory slide to coming uh, to the molecular uh, uh, diagnostics in cancer, you know, so we, I have used it. Just to come back here, you have like, you know, different essays being devel developed which were already like for the recurrent mutations where you use the PCR, then the single gene analysis for you use the Sanger sequencing and the multi gene panels, you use the NGS and then you use the whole exome genes. People uh, for this hereditary cancer patients, so even this you use it in the risk for second malignancy. And then uh, can we use this uh, uh, in the healthy people? Yes, maybe you can identify people uh, for uh, identification of subjects at risk. This predictive markers. For the predicting the cancer, can you have different markers, several essays and this particular you, you for that you use your DNA, RNA, proteins and then cells, your uh, tissue uh, slices and then for the molecular targets you have the uh, HER2 EGFR mutation, BRAF, ALK and ROS. For uh, the 
tumor prototype you have even the importantly the mutation phenotype sorry tumor phenotype you have the mutation burden these are also very very important circulating tumor fragments to assess like you know different assays are there uh, which uh, with your ctc's then ct dna then with the rna and the proteins for them uh, can they be uh, monitoring of tumor burden and the choice of therapy can also be uh, chosen here for many ca carcinomas of unknown origin also you have certain tissue specific markers tumor specific markers with uh, your point mutation gene rearrangements and copper uh, copy number uh, variations with all this you know these are all the very very important uh, terminology for uh, molecular diagnostics in uh, oncology for what are the current high throughput tests for cancer di diagnosis you have the uh, for the micro RNA and the RNA you have the microarray technology for the SNPs that is your single nucleotide for polymorphisms gene arrangements uh, there is the uh, capillary electrophoresis then you have the MALDI top MS the sequinom for uh, SNP uh, genotyping then for then you have the uh, pyro sequencing for your methylation analysis and then for the breast you know you have this is where not only this you you even have the nanostring panels now you know uh, for the breast cancer then hotspot cancer mutations there is a sample seek and then uh, for this um, FRMA gene profiling and then uh, sequencing NGS this is you have the fantastic uh, Illumina fact platforms so there are much of high throughput now available for all the for uh, diagnosing cancer cancer or cancer detection not only in, in a very broader level but very much till the cellular till the mutation level yes there is there is a way now now we have really seen how do you so this is one example you know uh, how I want to really highlight why how uh, different patients with the different uh, biomarkers and with the different treatment strategies how are they going to get going forward uh, this is like uh, biomolecular signatures you can uh, uh, classify patients into new specific taxa isn't it interesting even though patients uh, come with the same signs and same symptoms of uh, cancer but their outcome of the disease even to the same therapy is entirely different this is a group of patients you know uh, where uh, for example you know they have the biomarkers a a, a, a and b and then uh, c now uh, you stratify here pa patients with high a and b but low c here but patients with uh, low a b but high c here these patients have uh, um, they could have a worse, worse prognosis but they benefit from treatment this is the subclass of uh, patients here subclass of patients these patients could have better prognosis but they also benefit from another from the treatment you are able to stratify patients or classify patients according to the presence of the biomarker and you are able to predict if uh, to their outcome for the drug particular drug response what are the novel biomarkers here this is another fantastic table you know this one more very uh, interesting term which we will use is druggable targets what is a druggable target where you have a small drug small molecule inhibitors uh, which can act as drugs into the uh, for against this target this uh, every day this repository of targeted therapies is very much expanding for each particular uh, uh, cancer type for example your FLT3 NPM1 your uh, SCB CBPA and uh, your uh, PRAM1 in your ALL you know these are all the very very important markers for the uh, leukemia for all this uh, AML panels you know these are all very very important uh, markers uh, your BCR for example your BCR uh, ABL uh, will serve as a diagnostic marker many studies you know uh, we will be discussing in detail like your ALK, BRAF, KRAS, EGFR for the uh, 
uh, lung cancer. These are all very much like you know uh, for us. Now what do we do here for EGFR you need your DNA. Once you get your FFP from the pathology department you take the FFP then you extract. This is FFP is like a wax. In the wax you imagine just imagine for a lung cancer patient you really you won't be having loads of biopsy tissue right. It's not like a tissue where you can take a kind of uh, tissue regenerates itself. It's a very small speck of biology. So, uh, you have very fantastic diagnostic kits where your extraction of RNA and DNA from this FFP samples is very well, uh, is the yield is very high and it's very good, quality is very good. After you extract the DNA and the RNA, you set it for the qPCR and you look for the panel of EGFR, uh, EGFR panels that is your gene spe specific for EGFR. Then based on that the clinician will be informed they will be asking the report which is positive is a negative. Based on that he will be having the L0 tip and the Jeffrey tip which are nothing but your TKI inhibitors. For, for the uh, melanomas uh, we have the BRAF and for which the Vemirafenib is the uh, drug. These have uh, uh, very good consequences, you know, in the therapeutic, uh, all this particular molecular markers, you know, biomarkers, they are having very good uh, consequences in the, uh, for, for the therapeutic management of this cancer people. They have been uh, uh, approved, many of these markers are very well uh, approved by the world organizations, they are like uh, all the, uh, all this particular cancer, National Cancer Institute, wherever, you know, this is it's a must that people have to come with this particular signature biomarkers after detecting this particular uh, cancer. The, then for the colon cancer also they go for the wild type RAS, the musicians. Then for the head and neck, yes, may go for some people go for the HPV virus or other markers. Then for your uh, breast cancer as I mentioned you have the ERB2, BB2 then the, this goes for the targeted therapy. Uh, for the leukemia you have the BCR ABL panel. You have the different uh, uh, molecular uh, diagnostic markers for various uh, cancer, uh, breast, uh, cancer types. Coming to the cancer detection methods for uh, uh, cancer types, at the first we will co come across with the uh, breast cancer screening. This is how uh, many of the mammograms are all there. So, where there is the, um, uh, where uh, first the mammography is done, that is now uh, the very much of, a, uh, very much of an uh, important diagnostic tool or a, uh, CBE that is your clinical best examination by a healthcare provider and uh, the breast self examination they have been educated for uh, early uh, detection of breast cancer. Many so before years we have even the ultrasound there, there is a magnetic MRI and they have been added to the um, uh, uh, proposed list of uh, screening modalities for breast cancer. Many uh, studies uh, after this going to several screening there is like that the, they have many studies they have come to the uh, consensus that uh, the women for aged between 40 to 75 years of uh, if they are screened there is an uh, 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 there is a re reduction in the relative risk of breast cancer death by 10 to 25 percent. The risk benefit ratio is more favorable for women aged between to, uh, 60 to 69 years versus to 50 to 55 years. Where here the mammography uh, can also be uh, is, is uh, supposed to be operator dependent yes you need to have a technician with it and then uh, it has to be uh, uh, and it can be done even in very high volume centers. At the molecular level you know breast cancer is a very much a very heterogeneous disease. When you say at a molecular level yes just think imagine a breast cancer tissue can is can it be uniform. If I take 10 people 10 women breast cancer tissue is it uniform? No it is not uniform. It is called heterogeneous Where, and progresses from alterations that take place in the gene that govern uh, your cell growth, proliferation and uh, differenti uh, differentiation. All these genes if there is alteration then there is a progression towards uh, breast cancer.
just here for the base cancer it is usually a gene or protein that is based on its presence or expression at a certain level and it can predict the particular response here in this particular invasive breast cancer er that is your uh, er receptor estrogen or the progesterone uh, expression is a powerful predictive marker for response to your tamoxifen recollect my first slide in the initial uh, session and then uh, where we were talking yes can these genes can be the predictive marker for response to this particular tamoxifen that is the drug while the presence of her2 amplification or over expression it predicts response to specific anti her2 or, or antibodies such as your uh, trastuzumab and also it indicates an enhanced sensitivity for uh, anthracycline based uh, chemotherapy regimens specific for uh, breast cancer. This is again I do not want to go back to our hallmarks of cancer or the basics you know. Uh, if you recollect we were talking about all this uh, particular pathways you know for example your RAS how is it important you know uh, how is this particular uh, signaling uh, pathways how are they important for uh, uh, during for a normal sub for a normal homeostasis or uh, survival of the cell but for example if there is any alteration in this particular pathways there is uh, uh, there is increase in cell proliferation protein sensors angiogenesis which are nothing but your hallmarks of cancer uh, this is a particular pathway here you know this is like the the important pathways uh, molecular markers for breast cancer which are routinely used are your er pr and your or uh, uh, HET2. This is like you know these markers along with your clinical pathological uh, prognostic parameters such as the, uh, the age you know uh, age, at, age at diagnostics and the lymph node status where recollect what we were talking in the last class the tumor size and then your yeah, uh, histopathological grading they provide the prediction for the prognosis of cancer uh, recurrence after initial remedial treatment uh, maybe can uh, can they be like uh, whatever all this particular pa parameters taken together they can really predict the um, outcome or uh, future uh, uh, outcome of the disease or maybe even an any a future appropriate treatment this hormone uh, receptors and it's uh, uh, they are the uh, her2 they are the molecular markers and they are of prime uh, very much prime therapeutic uh, importance PRs and PRs they are you may basically your uh, uh, proteinaceous markers and they are usually found on the mammary cells which are which uh, and then uh, these are usually uh, uh, stimulated by the circulated uh, ovary hormones such as your uh, estrogen and the progesterone. Both these hormones are vital for uh, several functional events in the females you know which uh, as we know how important are all the uh, estrogen and the progesterone. So breast cancer uh, cells with these receptors they receive signals from relative hormones they to grow like normal cells do but these are already cancer uh, but these cells are also uh, these are already cancerous due to D uh, DNA damage you know these cells they grow all the more uh, rapidly in an um, uh, undisciplined manner here the ERPR receptors then you have the uh, head to receptors which are uh, detected by uh, IH, uh, IHC your immunohistochemistry or by the fish method then if they are uh, positive they respond to hormone therapy if they are respond uh, negative you know if this particular receptors uh, they have to go for a different route therapies other than the hormone the similar with your head to also they uh, they respond to the monoclonal antibodies if they are positive and then uh, again Again, if it is negative they have to approach for different other targeted uh, therapy. So col colorectal cancer which we have been studying about before also which involves uh, like for screening for this cancer it involves either stool st testing for occult blood or for DNA associated with polyps or cancer or structural examination uh, you know uh, screw with uh, looking for polyps or some early cancers screening was with the rigid uh, sigmoidoscope which from the before the late 1960s that is like you know and then uh, even there is something like to uh, to examine the uh, colon cancer there is something what they call developed a barium anemia also 
this is like uh, you know uh, how uh, again get back you know uh, to my basics of cancer again you know how um, you the normal uh, mucositis like how is the mutation like for example you have your beta catenin apc then the ent activation and then in the next step you have the a small aberrant crypt proliferation early adenoma it happens and this is where the at this stage you have the uh, keras uh, mutation and that will be uh, and then as further on you know in the inter at the staging of the intermediate adenoma you have the uh, smad uh, 2 4 uh, and the loss of uh, heterogeneity this is like how and then you have the dysplasia uh, uh, adenoma and then at the mutation at the TP53 thereby leading to a carcinoma. This is a very very important uh, model for uh, uh, adenocarcinoma sequence model for chromosomal instability. You have the CIN in colorectal cancer. This may be a very much a simplified model. Of course, it's not just a single uh, genetic abnormalities for the pro, uh, for this particular progression, but uh, you know, but it's a very uh, uh, unstable uh, chromosome leading to the uh, co colorectal uh, cancer. Cancer, as I said, you know, you have the loss of the uh, APC. First, you recollect, right? We just discussed in the basics where how uh, loss of this particular APC will uh, lead to the uh, complete uh, carcinoma. Larger adenomas and early carcinomas acquire mutations in your uh, GTPs. Like slowly here, you have the Keras. Follow uh, with the loss of your chromosome uh, 18Q with, with your SMAD4. Sometimes even in the mutation in BRIVAF which is common in MS1 plus uh, C colorectal cancer are also likely to occur in the place of your KRAS mutations. Mismatch repair def deficiencies, uh, you know in sporadic uh, CRC occur predominantly by down regulation of your MHC1, uh, MH, uh, sorry MLH1 uh, uh, through promoter methylation. This is the story about the uh, colorectal cancer. Now coming to a very important uh, cervical cancer screening, we have been discussing you know uh, very well much in the last session you know uh, how the government uh, different policies for cervical cancer. We were uh, talking about how the presence of an HPV could be a prelude for uh, cervical cancer. So cervical cancer, for example if you all think about cervical any cancer biologist you know the first thing which will come to our mind is your HeLa cells. Henry Tiller which is like she was a cervical cancer patient and from her there the HeLa cell line uh, was uh, derived. So these cell lines are nothing but from uh, her own cervical uh, cancer tissue and then from there uh, the cells were uh, propagated in the lab until now several labs or several students are put this ut utilizing this particular uh, cell lines as a model for cervical cancer. So, how would we use the first uh, model for cervical cancer screening? The pap smear which was first developed by George uh, Papanicolio uh, uh, in the early 1940s. It was not even, uh, it was, uh, it was not even introduced like a prospective randomized clinical trial and it has not been much uh, evolved from the initial time. So, like uh, if you really recollect uh, this is how the uh, normal LSIL, HSIL then to the cervical cancer. This uh, the original spam uh, pap smear used an ectocervical spatula to apply a, a specimen to a glass slide. After then the smear was fixed, stained and manually examined under this microscope and as a result now also it is being used very widely. But uh, we have a little bit uh, a variation with the liquid based thin layer system. Uh, and then uh, whatever you know this microscopy now because this pap smear you really require only a pathologist to grade it. Now there is some much of AI coming in place. The slide grading also is happening via the AI braced uh, approach. Uh, the um, mortality is, but pap has served is very well by reducing the mortalities, uh, uh, mortality rates and bringing the and uh, able to reduce and has been able to show reduction in the uh, cervical cancer incidence and mortalities after uh, after using the um, pap smear.
with the pap smear this particular uh, by, particular smear is very pap smear is very very crucial for cervical cancer screening and uh, many women at the over the age of 40 are recommended to undertake pap smear testing biopsy samples are uh, for the are checked by the pathologist for your uh, cervical uh, uh, intra epithelial uh, neoplasia that is carcinoma um, that, that is your cin it's like uh, it's it is a term used to uh, describe uh, cin used to describe abnormal cervical cells that were found on the surface of the cells usually after the biopsy usually cin is usually graded from 1 to 3 uh, based on how abnormal the cells look under a microscope and how much of the cervical tissue is affected. Usually LSIL here whatever you see here are usually uh, uh, generally SIN1. So HSIL changes seen are usually SIN SI, CIN2 or CIN3 here. One more important tool is like uh, for uh, sc screening of uh, uh, cervical can uh, cancer is your uh, colposcopy where, uh, where a speculum is used to gently open the vagina and see the cervix so, and the white uh, uh, vinegar solution is applied to the cer cervix to uh, or uh, acetic acid to show abnormal areas. Then uh, this is like uh, if there is a, a CIN or 2 or anything usually it is turns white. The, uh, this is like uh, uh, this is a this is about colposcopy. It's a cervical bioscopy where it's a small biopsy is used, procedure is used to remove cervical cells or tissue to be checked under the microscope, like for abnormal cervical cells, uh, including your cancer. Coming to the Pap smear versus uh, HPV testing, you know, this is something which is now like again, you know, uh, this is the cervical cancer screening is a very, very, very good example of how uh, from the traditional uh, methods, how it is slowly evolved into a molecular testing. Your HPV uh, testing is uh, for using molecular, molecular testing and many companies have come up with many kits for detection of HPV in uh, cervical scrapes. It's just nothing you just do boil uh, your uh, cycle cells for uh, DNA and that DNA either can be done using a PCR or a qPCR you can look for the presence of uh, HPV on the field yes HPV testing it can be done you have several uh, many companies coming up with handheld devices you know you may not have a very sophisticated instrument going on to the field you would really need to have something on the spot at least you screen 100 women and out of which you say you take you test one of them positive via this uh, hpv testing yes they can go forward for follow-up you are increase you can basically uh, by easing the ease or by easing the test facility or by making the test sample collection simple or a point of care or on the field device you know you can really have more participation or more recruitment of individuals into the uh, screening programs this is like as we all know that HPV 16 and 18 they are the cause for uh, um, uh, for 70 percent of cervical cancer and there are many other 13 other uh, HPV known subtypes. This is the fantastic platform which is uh, developed by the Kobas the Roche and uh, that is the 4800 and where, where HPV testing can, uh, can be used along with cyto cytology co-testing or it can be used as an um, uh, standalone test for detection of uh, HPV virus which could be a prelude to cervical cancer uh, before pro cervical cancer now this like you know uh, this is like uh, it's usual it is uh, and HPV testing is very very well accepted or very well useful because of its uh, of its uh, negative predictive val value these are the recommendations for women at risk uh, you know uh, uh, like this thick like screening for cervical cancer this is uh, uh, usually begin at 21 years of age you know age 21 should uh, make and receive cytology screening with other conventional cytology smears or liquid based cytology they should go for every three years um, 
for women aged 30 to 65 years, the preferred approach to be screened every 5 years for both HPV testing and cytology. Uh, cytology. Women who have undergone hysterectomy, they can need not go through uh, this particular uh, cervical cancer screening. Coming for one more complex uh, cancer screening, you know, for uh, cancer is uh, lung cancer. First thing, earlier we only used to associate smoking and lung cancer together. Only if people who smoke have lung cancer, no, it is not like that. Lung, stand, lung cancer is now uh, the leading cause of cancer. It is even taking uh, uh, the higher roads, much crossing the breast and the cervical cancer, especially in women in the uh, premenopause age. So now, uh, uh, definitely having a very good uh, diagnostic test or a screening device or a screening tool for lung cancer is absolutely the need of an R now. First, uh, first thing, what are the different ways of screening? Uh, definitely a direct uh, symptoms, you know, like your uh, uh, so direct tumor infection, like include your uh, cough with uh, blood, wheezing, shortness of breath and um, and the biggest uh, problem here in, with the lung cancer is most patients present is themselves at stage 4. They are mostly confused with uh, uh, pneumonia like symptoms or with tuberculosis you know and by the time uh, the patient come to the hospital itself it's like uh, it is a very tough challenge for the clinician to answer this. What is the important tool? So, chest CT is a fundamental imaging tool for the evolution of lung cancer and it is most commonly used as a non-invasive uh, uh, modality for uh, screening and staging of lung cancer. So, it is usually uh, used to define the size, location and characterize your lung lesions. Um, then uh, from September, from 2019, you know, uh, low dose chest CT it is employed for the screening of lung cancer in many uh, in many in many of the high risk individuals in many countries all the western countries are employing uh, ldct for detection of your lung cancer then you have the pet ct where you know uh, uptake of the radio labeled uh, of, uh, glucose analog you have different uh, biopsies available for lung cancer it's very important you know it is like your uh, fiber optic bronchoscopy. Uh, so, very, these are all the high end uh, biopsies, you know, because it is a lung is a very vital uh, organ and you just cannot have like, like the breast or uh, cervix and all, you just cannot have a lot of uh, tissue coming out. Uh, the patient, in case if any of these procedures are not uh, taken uh, care in the presence of an anesthesian and in the presence of a proper clinician, you know, uh, there are chances that the patients may collapse during the uh, biopsies. Fibro, fi fiber optic uh, bronchoscopy where uh, yes uh, it is like uh, the bronchial pathway to this particular uh, uh, to the target lesion where the sampling to be uh, where uh, where the sampling where the sample has to be performed using 4 should be uh, where exactly it has to be uh, determined it has to be precisely located by the careful uh, carefully by the looking at the patient's anatomy uh, before uh, FPS uh, procedure it's very important this uh, diameter for this commercial FPS is usually around uh, 6 mm and uh, e e EBUS is uh, TBNA which is nothing but your uh, endobronchial ultrasound uh, guided uh, transbronchial needle aspiration. Now coming back to our fantastic slide here for the lung cancer which we have been talking all throughout for many many uh, times you know all throughout. For why do, what exactly are these particulars? For ex in all our uh, hospitals, we go for this particular molecular uh, markers. You go for the EGFR panels, you have the ALK panels and not not all hospitals have the BRAF and not, uh, not all scenarios go for the PD-1 and the pd l one expression. For the EGFR, you have, uh, it is very well, uh, mutation is very more prevalent in, uh, 20, in around 20 to 50 percent in adenocarcinoma, LUAD cases, lung cancer, adenocarcinoma. And the most common mutations in your EGFR is like your exon 19 deletion and the L85A, L858R substitution. 
So many people, many of us uh, usually detect the CGFR mutations mostly by RT-PCR which is uh, something which is very easy, it is very quite cost effective and then uh, people even go for your Sanger sequencing and the NGS. So you have the different drugs very importantly, this is a very very good example of how uh, the tailoring of uh, the cancer treatment goes on. So, you have a positive in this particular mutation, yes you have this particular drugs being given like your, your gefitinib, epitinib, uh, erlotinib all this are being given. Then again and this is again taken from your uh, DNA from the FFPA, please recollect our earlier uh, slide. And then you have the ALK, you know, where it is uh, present in 3 to 5 percent in uh, non squamous cell lung cancer patients, and then among which your uh, uh, EML4 ALK fusions are more common. And then the, the most popular uh, method is uh, you even have the RT PCR here, then you even have the FISH, uh, FDA approved FISH, um, FISH by uh, a IHC, which is done. These are all very approved test and then even the uh, NGS. Then the uh, ROS is also prevalent in 2 to 3 percent of your adenocarcinoma patient and uh, this particular uh, mutations are common and then uh, other apart from your RT PCR you, you even have your uh, IHC and the NHC. This again uh, uh, different drugs are available for the BRAF also and then the PD-1 and the PDL one expression these are also now gaining lot of po popularity after uh, for uh, uh, the treatment and then uh, there are pre prevalent in 42 percent of the lung cancer patient and then uh, for them uh, they have the different uh, drugs. So, diagnosis of uh, coming to this concluding you know, uh, now this particular in this whole uh, both the sessions in the last session and now we have really understood what are the different what is why do we really go for cancer screening you know what exactly other than eliminating positive and negative and then uh, and we have really uh, gone into the in depth uh, um, uh, studies of what exactly are biomarkers and how do we really what exactly the tissue samples or the samples required in the laboratory for uh, screening for this particular biomarker. No longer ca cancer is diagnosed as uh, only on uh, morphological parameters as I said. So, it is uh, that uh, you need to have your algorithms which is supported both by your, uh, your IHCs then your DNA signatures, uh, uh, mRNA and the miRNA and the proteome signatures all of them are very very important to have to stratify the cancer types. Though many multiple uh, platforms high, through to, uh, high throughput technologies uh, which are uh, enabling better analysis you know. Uh, uh, still, you know, we are, uh, it, uh, it, it is not like tumors are characterized by a single gene alteration. You are having a signature genomic alterations as I mentioned here, EGFR signature genomic alteration for lung cancer. The ultimate goal of your cancer diagnosis in should be for personalized medicine to identify and grade and do a perfect diagnostics and give a guided therapy so that every patient receives the prediction uh, the, the medicine which is in the right dose and in the right concentration and then will and they will be able to predict is this going to uh, uh, is this going to really uh, help the patient in the better outcome. Thank you.